I would say that probably the most often asked question of God is why. It was the question that I found the answer to about 1950 years after Jesus asked it on the cross. I'll never forget discovering that I was the living answer to that question. He was why, as we read, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And as a little boy, I discovered I was the reason, I was the answer to that question. But since that time, of course, and, and throughout history, people have asked that question. Why the young mother killed by a drunken driver? Why the young servant of the Lord stricken with a brain tumor? Why, why, why? I'm sure there are millions of whys that have risen up to the throne of God. And someday, I dare say, we'll find the answer to these questions. And I, I know that because the scripture says that all things work together for good. And God will connect the dots for us and show us why. Now, I was privileged to help publish two books by William MacDonald uh, quite some years ago by Gospel Folio Press. If you like good stories and you don't have these books, you better order them. In fact, I'd suggest you buy a few copies and give them to other people who enjoy reading good stories too. Um, they are simple, easy to read. They're full of exciting truth. Uh, they're divided into three sections. The Wonders of God is one book, and Our God is Wonderful is the second volume. And these three sections are The Wonders of God in Creation, just chock-a-block with amazing facts about the creation around us. The middle section is The Wonders of God in Providence, how God has worked in history. And then the third section is the wonders of God in redemption, salvation stories. And if you have a relative who's willing to read, who enjoys reading, this is a great approach because they'll get hooked on the first section in creation. And then they'll be amazed at the middle section. And before they get to the end of the book, they'll be reading the gospel. So I would highly encourage you to do it. And as a, as a, an encouragement yourself, I'm just going to read to you. It's, it's not much more than a one-page story. It's a story about, um, strange as it may seem, a plane crash. It, it occurred uh, February 15, 1947, an Avianca a DC-4 uh, from Barranquilla, Colombia, to Bogota uh, crashed into a mountain, and uh, they say it was pilot error. All 53 were killed. And at that time, it was the worst air disaster in history. But here's the backstory. I'm reading Bill's article now. It's simply called Why. Glenn Chambers boarded his flight to New York en route to Quito, Ecuador, to serve with Christian radio station HCJB, the voice of the Andes. No doubt his heart was filled with a sense of exhilaration and anticipation. After all, few things are so fulfilling as stepping out in service for the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary. Glenn had to change planes at Miami, so he used the weight to write a note to his mother. He didn't have any stationery, but used a folder with advertising on it. At the top of the first page was the single word, Why? In the blank spaces, he scribbled out a short report of his flight so far. He never did arrive in Quito. Not far from the airport, a mountain, El Tabazo, rises 14,000 feet into the sky. Chambers plane crashed inexplicably into the mountain and the flaming wreckage tumbled into a ravine below. 
all on board were killed. The news of his death reached his mother quickly, and then a few days later, she received the note he had mailed from the Miami airport. In big letters was the word, Why? A good question. Why did he have to die so young when he was so anxious to serve the Lord? Was this a victory to be chalked up to Satan's account? What good could possibly come out of such a tragedy? At the time, the only comforting answer was found in the Savior's words, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. John 13, 7. Twenty-seven and a half years later, a valiant missionary was scouting out unreached territory in the mountains of Ecuador. To her surprise, she met a tribe of people who were bilingual. They could speak Spanish as well as their own tribal language. They seemed to be of unusual intelligence. Best of all, the chief and many of the people told her they were Christians. How could they be Christians? To the best of her knowledge, no one had ever reached this far into the jungle with the gospel. When she asked them how they came to know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the chief went into a hut and returned with a charred briefcase. Inside was a Spanish Bible. When the missionary opened to the flyleaf, she read, Presented to our dear brother, D. Glenn Chambers, Christian Friends on Long Island in New York, had signed it. The chief explained that on a trip through the jungle they had found the briefcase, and that through reading the Bible they had found the Lord. They had obviously been where Glenn Chambers' plane had crashed. Glenn's life had not been wasted. Through his well-worn Bible, the light of the gospel had streamed into the hearts of jungle people and made them new creatures in Christ Jesus. Well, I leave that with you, and I encourage you to get a hold of these books, The Wonders of God and Our God is Wonderful. Share the, the stories. These are tremendous encouragements. The Bible tells us to tell it to the generations following. Read these stories to children, your children, your grandchildren, and let people know that, that God can be trusted and he knows what he's doing. And he doesn't win most of the time. He wins all of the time. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord.